Father, we thank you and we bless you for this moment in your word. We ask that you would give us revelation, insight, and understanding. Let an activation take place in our spirit that leads to your will being done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. You may be seated. I'm going to try to lay the foundation and teach this word at the top and preach it how I can. Last I was here, Bishop challenged me in the way that stuck with me. God woke me up in the middle of the night and gave me some specific insight and instruction for your next season. For your next season. And as I walked in the room and I got here, I would hear since such an affirmation of this word. For So for my note takers, something may be said that you heard, but you might want to jot it down. Is, is it all right if I teach today just a little bit? I will preach, but I'm going to teach. Here we go. We're going to talk about the power of agreement. The power of agreement. The power of agreement. This is a kingdom key to acceleration. How many of you know there's some things that's been held up that you want to receive in this season? Some things that God has promised you that he has put a mandate and spoken to your life that he's going to release and reveal to you. I want to deal with this topic of the power of agreement. When you think about the power and agreement that's being released, this is a an authority. This is um, an assignment that God has for the revelation of what he wants to reveal to the hearts of his people. So agreement is, I like to say, the place. It's the place where God can trust you with what he's up to. Mm -hmm. It's the place where God can trust you with what he's up to. When he is releasing and revealing revelation, when he has a desired outcome for your life, you need to come into a space or a place of agreement in order for it to manifest in your life. A lot of times we think that we're waiting on God, but God is in fact not, we're not waiting on him at all. He's waiting on us to agree with him. Come on, somebody say, I agree with God. I agree with God. Uh, agreement, agreement in the definition is a negotiated or a typically legally bounding arrangement between two parties as a course of action. This word agreement is a legal word, which means it has binding authority. It has powerful authority that if you decree a thing, it shall be established. If you declare a thing, it shall manifest. And if I'm doing that, what can be the holdup sometimes in the manifestation of what God has promised me? Matthew 16 and 19 puts it like this as Jesus is making a kingdom declaration. He says, I will give you the keys of the kingdom. Somebody say, I, I got the keys. I got the keys. Come on, put it in your spirit. Say, I got the keys. I got the keys. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. The keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Have I got a believer in here that believes that? Whatever. Somebody say, whatever, 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 whatever you bind on earth, whatever you restrict, whatever you disallow, whatever you do not per permit will be bound in heaven and whatever you loose, release, let go will be loosed on earth, will be loosed in heaven. And the idea that this is not some name it, claim it, right? This is the idea that whatever God has already decided, whatever God has already decided, decided as relates to my life. If I agree with God on what has already been decided, it will then, in from the heavenlies, be released in the earth. And if I get a God said on what he has already disallowed, and I agree with God as relates to what he's disallowed on earth, then he has given me legal right and authority to bind it up. In other words, I don't have to just take it because the enemy sent it my way. I can send it back 
back where it came from uh, if uh, it does not line up with the will of God. Y'all going to help me today? Uh, once I get a hold of what it is that God has assigned for my life, once I get a revelation of the fact that he wants me healthy, once I get a revelation of the fact that he wants me wealthy, once I get a revelation of the fact he wants my family saved, once I get a revelation of uh, that how he wants me to move in the earth, once I understand that in the heavenly realm, then I have the right and the authority to release from heaven in the earth so that it can manifest in every area of my life. And the enemy will try to tell you that maybe this is your lot. It must not be God. Maybe that's not what God wants from you. But the enemy is a liar because once I have an understanding of what God said, then I can receive it in Jesus' name. Somebody clap your hands and give God praise right there. So, so, so watch it. Watch it as I teach it. Agreement gives me access and authority to what has already been decided. You have to get this point because we cannot just try to force God to do what we want him to do. But we can find agreement with God in the area that he's already decided and come in alignment with that so it will manifest in our lives. So now get God gives us keys. He gives us keys of the kingdom of God. Keys are principles. Everybody say principles. Principles. Keys are principles, which means that they are fixed laws that always work. They are fixed laws that always work. When God gives us a key, he's giving us a way that the kingdom of God operates. And, and, and the knowledge of having keys is knowing what the keys are for. Because if you have keys and you do not know what they're for, you will be frustrated with the right key at the wrong door. I'm going to work in a minute. And there's a lot of people that are standing with the right key, but in front of the wrong door. And then they're frustrated with God because the door isn't opening. And God says, you got the right key, but you in front of the wrong door. See, there's a lot of people that's trying to get the key, uh, uh, the, the, the heavens to release your prosperity. But you releasing a praise for prosperity. Now, praise is appropriate, but it's not the key for prosperity. The key for prosperity is to give. If you give, it shall be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together and running over. So you can run, shout, dance all you want at offering time. But that's not going to release your finances. The only thing that's going to open up the financial gate is for you to release a financial seed and then that manifests in your life. Are y'all following me today? Uh, so there's keys that work at certain places and in certain ways. And if you don't function with the right key in the right moment, in the right place, it will separate you from the idea that God has for you. Now follow me because keys are fixed, which means they always work. Keys always work. It's not if it works, it will always work. The key to keys is finding which key works for which thing. When I I know what key works for what thing, it will always work. It will work every single time you use that key because it's cut for that particular door. And the kingdom of heaven is fixed laws that always work. And the enemy will love for you to be ignorant of how the kingdom works so you can remain frustrated instead of walking in your faith and your ability to access what God has for you. Are y'all feeling me this morning? And so when you think about keys and the way keys work, they're systems that have been sealed in eternity and God is releasing, unlocking, revealing, and showing how these things manifest in the earth realm. Now, when you have the right key and you come into agreement with God, agreement gives you access and authority for what has already been decided on earth. So now I have the keys of 
the kingdom of God. God says there's things in the heavenly realm that I want to release, things I want to loose. There are activities in the earthly realm that need to be bound up. I need a person. I need a person as a conduit to agree with heaven to release and to bind so that I can manifest the kingdom of God in the earth. He says it again like this in Matthew 18. He says, what I'm about to tell you is true. What you lock on earth will be locked in heaven and what you unlock on earth will be unlocked in heaven. He says again, here's what I tell you. Suppose two of you agree, two of you on earth agree about anything you ask for. My father in heaven will do it for you. For where two or three people are gathered in my name, I am there with them. Now, if you knew the power that you possess, the top part is where you shout. Because the Bible says that I'm going to tell you that this is true, that whatever you lock on earth will be locked in heaven, and whatever you unlock on earth will be unlocked in heaven, which means God has given you a power and authority to lock and to unlock. That God has given you a power and authority to bind and to loose, to release and to withheld. Can I just make a declaration that I believe that what has been held up is about to be released, that God is releasing a new power in your life, that you're going to walk in such an authority for the last four months of this year, that you're going to see a season of acceleration and manifestation in your life like you've not seen before. Can you clap your hands and give God a praise? Uh Uh-huh. So glad for a mature house. Listen to me. Some things that God wants to do in your life are so big that you can't do them alone. Some things are so big that you can't do them alone. So he shows you how to function and to operate in the spirit of agreement. Because agreement is the key of the kingdom. Can I teach you a little bit? Genesis 126 says, then God says, let us, somebody say us, let us make man in our image, God, one God, three manifestations, one God in unity, three different distinct manifestations, how he reveals himself, let us make man in our image and in our likeness, somebody say, I'm like God, I'm like God, I'm like God, come on, say, I am made in the image and the likeness of God. Come on, say it again. I'm made in the image and the likeness of God, which means that I have God ability. So in the same way God moves, I can move like God. In the same way that he does, I can operate like him. Let us make man in our image and in our likeness and let him, let them have what? Dominion over the fish of the sea, over the bird of the air, over the cattle, over everything that creeps upon the earth. Not dominion over people, but dominion over everything. God made you the head and not the tail. God made you above and not beneath. God gave you power and he gave you authority. Why? Because you're made in the image and the likeness of God. So when you think about the kingdom of God, what is the kingdom of God? The kingdom of God is God's rule, his reign on the earth through believers. Is God expressing himself through the lives of believers? Is his people looking like, talking like, walking like, and acting like him? It's when people see them, they see him. It's when the kingdom of God shows up is whenever you show up. Whenever you show up at work, the kingdom of God just got better. Whenever you show up on a team, the kingdom of God just got better. I need somebody that know who they are to look down your road and say, your road just got better because I'm sitting here. Come on. Come on. Tell them. Tell them. Your road, your road just got better because I'm sitting next to you. You just got better. Everything around you just got better. Something is about to manifest. Why? Because I just showed up. And when I show up. Let me, lay it, let me lay it down. High five somebody telling me it just got better. It just got better. Y'all, 
the kingdom of God is God's rule and reign in the earth. So God says, let me show you how this principle operates so I can break the frustration out of this season of your life. Let me show you how to, how, I don't mind plowing, it's okay. Let me show you how to move in a way where you reflect heaven on earth. Watch it. So, so, when you, so he gives you the key of agreement. Why? Because agreement is one of the greatest powers on earth. Agreement is one of the greatest powers on earth. It's one of the greatest powers on earth. The enemy knows this. This is why the enemy cannot stand agreement. He cannot stand for people to be in agreement. Because he knows that if you ever get in agreement, everything is about to change. So, so the, enemy, the, the enemy knows agreement is one of the greatest powers on earth. Look at this. Genesis 11 and 6. And the Lord said, if as one people speaking the same language. Who said this? The Lord said it. If as one people speaking the same language, they have begun to do this, then nothing they plan to do will be impossible for them. He says, God says that if these people ever get on the same page at the same time and make up their mind that they're going to do something for God, nothing is going to be impossible. Did y'all, did, are y'all reading the same Bible I'm reading? Who said this? The enemy didn't say this. God said that if people ever come into agreement, whatever they put their mind to do, will nothing will be impossible for them to accomplish. Can you high five your praise button and tell them congratulations? Because you just stepped into a season of supernatural accomplishments because God is about to help you do the impossible. I got to come. I didn't know. I didn't know Big Give was next Sunday. I didn't know that we were building something. I didn't know we was working on something. But I heard God say that if the people ever get unified, every house, every family, every church ever get unified on one thing, that nothing will be impossible because agreement is the greatest power on earth. Now find your praise partner around you and don't play with me and look around you and say, do you agree? 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 Sit down. So now, Father's house, I got to lay my foundation. I got excited. I'm sorry. Uh, you, you don't need everyone, Cam. You don't need everyone. You just need anyone. Mm. <laughs> See, your problem is you think you need everybody to like you. I don't need everybody to like me. I'm not everybody cup of tea. Everybody not going to like me. Everybody not with me. And that's okay because I don't need everybody to like me. I just need any one person to agree with God on my behalf. And if I get to agree with God, anything's possible. That's why I try to take my wife with me everywhere I go. Because even if y'all don't like me, she's still with me. And as long as she's with me, God is with us. You've been trying, you've been wasting your time trying to get too many people to be on your side and you miss that you don't need everybody on your side. You just need somebody that agrees with God on your behalf. Clap your hand and say one vision. Clap your hands and say one voice. Clap your hands and say one victory. Look at somebody else and say one vision, one voice, one victory. Open up your mouth and release your sound right there. I feel it. Sit down. Sit down. Y'all getting me excited. Now let's deal with something real quick because this it's the elephant in the room. I hear you. You're like, mm-hmm, that's good, but huh. And some people I can't agree with. You can't come into agreement until you learn how to deal with disagreement. I'm in the text. You can't you can't come into agreement until you learn how to deal with disagreement. You have disagreement. Dealing with disagreement is an art. It's going to happen. It's going to come because we're all humans. We're individuals. We have different perspectives. We have different ways. We have different understanding. And so if you don't preconceive, predetermine how you'll deal with disagreement, then you'll find yourself stuck in a moment when you really need God to manifest something, but you're in the wrong space. Uh, Let's get to it. Division is then the enemy of decreeing. Division is the enemy of decreeing. If I decree a thing, it shall be said. If I decree a thing, but if I'm, if I'm divided, if I'm double-minded, if I'm not in agreement, it'll block my declaration. I'll be, you can decree and declare to you blue in the face, but if there's no agreement, there's no manifestation. 
I'm a push. If the kingdom of God is divided against itself, the kingdom cannot stand. If a house is divided against itself, that house cannot stand. Jesus said that. That's why you got to make sure that everybody in your house is in alignment. We might not all like each other, but we got to agree on some stuff. We might not always agree on everything, but there's some things we can't afford to disagree on because it's too much at stake. It's too much at stake. I love my wife and I. We create a culture of agreement. We agree on most things. The only thing we can agree on is what we eat eating after church. Y'all ain't helping me today. But, but the truth is that there has to be a culture of agreement because too much is at stake. Matthew 18 and 2, 18 says, again, here's what I tell you. Suppose two of you agree as touching anything. My father, my father in heaven will do it for you. Why? For where there is two or three people gathered in my name, I am with them. Walk with me here. Jesus is is giving us instruction about handle conflict, how to handle conflict. Pastor Brady, I looked at this text again, and I realized sometimes we misquoted. Oh, it don't take a lot of people. Just he's in a small gathering. But what he's really saying is he's giving us an instruction. The context of the scripture is giving us instruction how to handle conflict. Jesus is saying agreement is so weighty, and what I want to do with your life is so important that you have to learn how to deal with disagreement before you get to agreement because you're going to stand into a big moment and not have the power that you need to accomplish what you need to do. So the enemy, when he knows you getting close to something and getting next to something, he starts trying to drop little things and seeds of discord. He's trying to plant disagreement because he's like, I can't mess with what God has already decided. So what I'll do is I'll try to mess with the people that he decided to do it with. But I got a people in the room that refuse to allow Allow anything to stop what God has assigned for your life. Can you really surprise this for a moment? I need to know who's agreeing with me. Watch it. Watch it. Watch it. Watch it. Watch it. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Jesus has given us an instruction on how to handle conflict with others. Are y'all okay? Watch it. Matthew 18, 20 has little to do with the size or the amount of people. It has everything to do with conflict resolution. Because the worst thing you could do is get ready for something big and be in conflict with somebody that you need to be in agreement with. It's the worst thing you could do is get ready to run and the people that said that was wrong with you not sure if they're in a race it's not it's nothing it's nothing worse than getting ready to get out of debt and somebody decide they want to go shopping y'all not hear what i'm saying i mean it's nothing worse that you're getting ready to start a business or you're getting ready to buy a house and the person that you're trying to buy the house with is not on the same page we got to get on the same page people because god has some big things in store for us so he teaches us he teaches us how to deal with conflict resolution. Oh, conflict revolution, resolution. And then Jesus promises that if we follow his path and his plan, he will be with us. He will be with us in conflict resolution because people hate conflict. They want to avoid conflict. It's uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable. You just want to act like it's not there. You know you acting stanky. Don't try to act like you're not funny acting. You know you didn't speak to me the same way you normally speak to me. You know you looking at me different. Don't just try to sit up here and act like we cool when we know we not cool. Is this something between me and you? You got something you need to say to me? Don't be passive aggressive with it. I mean, you, you got something on your chest. I mean, come on, Cleavers, get it off your chest. I love you. We're not leaving. I'm not breaking up. I don't want to walk away. I just want to clear the air because I don't have time to live in conflict. So Jesus said that when we do this, when we do this, we're not alone. So when I have a difficult disagreement moment, here's what I do. First, I bring it to them. First, I bring it to them. Listen, first, I bring it to them. Don't bring it to somebody else. Don't go talking to somebody else behind their back. Don't go telling nobody else. Don't be gossiping. Don't be trying to vent. Don't be trying to, I'm just trying to get something on my chest. Don't, don't be trying to counsel down. Don't try to counsel down and call it counseling. If you're going to get counsel, counsel up. Counsel to somebody. 
body that has nothing to do with your situation. So to make sure that it doesn't come off like you're spreading disunity or functioning in dysfunction. So, so, so the first thing I do is I bring it to them. Me and you need to have a conversation, a truth in love. I don't want to talk behind your back. I got to deal with disunity. I got to deal with disagreement because there's some big things that God has for my life. Then if I can't get to you and you don't hear me, now go get two or three. We're not a mob. It's not my cousin and my brother. No, 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 no. It's two or three people that kind of don't have anything to do with it so that they can have a, a, a conscious way of approaching it. An unbiased perspective. Don't bring people that you didn't already vent it to and then you try to walk up on somebody. We need to talk to you. They're like, whoa, wait a minute. I'm from the street now, all right? So, so, you, don't, so you bring it to two or three witnesses. Number three, if that doesn't resolve it, then you take it to leadership. Then you bring it to somebody. Don't just jump straight. You ain't even talk to them and now you're going to tell on them. Don't go tell on me and you ain't talk to me. Give me a chance to fix this before you go tell on somebody and try to act like you were looking out. You weren't looking out for me because if you got something to say to me, say it to me. I'm right here. I'm sorry. Tell your neighbor, tell him I got some big things. I got some big things. Watch it. Watch it. I got some big things. I got some big things. So in the context, in the context of scripture, Jesus tells you how to deal with conflict before you get to the power of agreement. Because he says disagreement can't be divisive. It can't be divisive. It has to be, it has to be systematic. It has to be fair. It has to come through the proper channels so that the big thing can manifest as for your life. Disagreement and disappointment doesn't have to lead to dishonor. <laughs> Just because I disagree with you don't mean I have to dishonor you. Just because I'm disappointed in you don't mean I have to disrespect you. I can respectfully disagree with you and still honor you in your place, in your position. I cannot like what you did, not like what you said, or the way you said it, and still treat you with honor because I honor you because of the anointing and the grace that God has put in your life, even if I don't like the way you do what you do. It's a gro we in grown church today. And so, so the truth of the matter is, differences is how we develop. Y'all taking notes? <laughs> differences is how we develop. Iron, sharpen iron. Differences is how we develop. When you come into conflict, don't run from it. It's an opportunity to grow. It's an opportunity to test your relationships. It's an opportunity because some people only with you for as long as you tell them yes. The moment you tell some people no, that's when you're going to find out if they're really with you. Uh-huh. Oh, y'all didn't like that one. Some people are only with you as long as you're giving them what they want. This differences is how we sharpen ourselves. It's how we develop. It's how we get a greater understanding. It's how we get a bigger perspective. And, 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 and you have to know that differences should not be a disconnection and it should not cause disunity because disunity disrupts the anointing. Disunity disrupts the anointing. You need a scripture for that because it's a word, church. Psalms 133 says, how good and pleasant it is for brothers to give, live together in unity. It is like the precious oil on the head running down the beard, running down Aaron's beard, down to the collar of, it, of his robe. You see this? The anointing flows where there's unity. If there's disunity, the oil can't flow. If there's disunity, the power of agreement can't manifest. So you can want to do something big that God wants you to do. But if you're in disunity, disagreement, and dysfunction with somebody that you need to agree with, it can be held up in the heavenlies and you mad at God and God mad at you. Because he's like, hey, 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 I'm not really mad at you, but I need you to get in alignment with me so that you can manifest what I promise you. Because I'm not holding you up, you're holding yourself up. There's a lot of people in church that's held up because the differences are creating disagreements. So how do we come together to find out what we do? We come together because we align around what we agree on. Let's, let's, let's find the win-win in the situation. Let's align around what we agree on, principles, the principles of God. Let's align around the word of God. Let's discuss where we disagree because those are the preferences. Let's not make pre preferences principles. 
<laughs> Let's, it, doesn't make your, it doesn't make your preferences wrong. It just isn't a principle. Let's align around principles because principles, you'll get it next week. Principles are in fact what we have to align around because principles are the keys that operate the kingdom of heaven in our lives. And we spend too much time fussing over preferences instead of functioning in principles. And therefore we're held up from the power of agreement. Uh Uh-huh. So, so, so when God brings us in alignment with people, relationships, leadership, family dynamics, husbands, wives, workplaces, it's important that you're mature enough to stay in alignment and agreement with the leader that you've been assigned so you don't disrupt the anointing that's on your life. The enemy knows that he can lure you out of alignment and agreement if he plays these little games of frustration because of differences. Then you disrupt the flow of what God was getting ready to do because God needed you to come into alignment and agreement. Can you lift your hands all over the room and just say, I agree with God. Come on. Lift your hands all over the room. Say, I agree with God as relates to my life. I agree with God as concerning. Come on, pull it in. I agree with God as concerning the purpose and the plan of my life. I agree with God with all of the things he's promised for my life. I agree with God with all the things he's spoken over my life. I agree with God. Clap your hands and give God praise right there. Clap your hands and give God praise right there. Can I get the band real quick? Let me show you an illustration, then I'll be on my way. Here it is. Agreement, when Jesus talks about it, is literally to synthesize, to symphonize. Jesus wants us to accomplish. Can I get, can I get everybody? Can, is, can I get everyone, Chris, Pastor Chris? So Jesus wants us to symphonize. Uh, he wants us to accomplish this in a way that we can be different, but still be in agreement. Watch how it goes. Y'all, Y'all know, where, y'all know where this is about to go. We can be different and still be in agreement even though we're different. We think that different means disagreement. Difference does not mean disagreement. Difference and uniqueness is really a strength if you're trying to create something. The more diversity you have, the more power you have. If you can get diversity to come into a place of agreement. And so the thing about agreement, the thing about agreement, the thing about agreement in the orchestra or the way Jesus has it is that there are many different parts, many different volumes, many different ways many different sounds. I'll come back to that. Uh, and, 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 and in order for us to come into purposeful alignment with the things of God, we have to maintain our distinctive differences. But yet we cannot let the differences cause disagreement. So we got the band. We got the band, right? So if you think about it, everybody in the band plays a different part. Everybody in the band plays a different sound. And if they all play their part and play a different sound, they can still be in agreement as long as they're in the same key. I got somebody paying attention. As long as, as, long as they're in the same key key, then there is no dysfunction or no disunity. The only way that the band can function in discord is if they all play a different key, right? So now they're all different, they're all different and they're all talented and they're all skilled but on the count of three, all play in a totally different key. I don't know if that's possible. This band is so in sync without talking to each other, they probably all play the same key. But watch it. But one, two, three, Play a key. One, two, three, play. Horrible. Right. Horrible. Stop. It's atrocious. Oh my God. If you're looking over there like, what? Is, look at your face. You're like, what is wrong with them? I have never heard them sound. Now, that's all different people, all different instruments, all different expertise. Different, different different. They hit a chord. It was nasty. It was uncomfortable. It made you feel icky, right? Now, if the same people all 
in their own instrument play the same key even though they're different but operating in the same key all of a sudden the same people behind the same instruments can create something beautiful that's different y'all ready for them come on let's count them out one two three go now stay there let me hear a little bass come on out a little bit bass come on guitar hear something from me. Come on, organ play a little something right there. Come on, keyboard, give me a little. Come on, drums, come out a little bit. I can hear something different in every sound, but every sound is playing the same key. And when every sound comes together, they make a medley together instead of something different. Look at your neighbor say, we can be different and still be on the same key. Clap your hands and give God a praise. Wait. I don't know. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Every, you don't have to lose your individuality. You don't have to lose your distinctive difference in order to be in agreement. You just need to make a decision that you will stay in alignment and agreement with the direction that you're going. And then you can get something beautiful out of uniqueness of differences. The enemy wants you to think that in order for you to play on the same key, you have to all be the same. So agreement brings us into alignment. Everybody do this, and I'm about to be done with it. Bring, agreement brings us into alignment. Everybody's different, but we agree. When I have a difference, the question is, do we agree? Can we agree on... Okay, we can disagree on that. Let's take that. Let's put that over here. Can we agree on this? Because if we can agree on this, we can get acceleration. Y'all okay? I'm almost finished. I'm, I'm, then there's going to be an activation. I'm telling you. So here, agreement then brings you into alignment. Agreement brings you into alignment. Can two walk together unless they agree? Which way are we going? We're going this way. Somebody say we're going this way. Somebody got to say I'm going that way with you. Which way are we going? This way. Now, there's many ways you can get that way. So don't get caught up on which way we're going to take to get there. Just, get, just decide that you're going there. Because if you decide where you're going, you can work out how you get there the fastest, the best way, with the less energy, with the least cost of money in any process. Because that's how you get to agreement. So before, before I agree with anybody, let me just get this together. I have to agree with God and I have to agree with myself. Before I can agree with you, I have to agree with God, and I have to agree with myself. Before I can get in a relationship with you, a business relationship, a friendship, a partnership with you, I have to know what it is that God is doing in me, so when I run into you, I know if we going the same way. <laughs> Gotta agree with God. Somebody say, I agree with God for myself. I agree with God. Say, I agree with God and myself. No. I got to disagree. I got to break unhealthy agreements. <sighs> I have to break unhealthy agreements that I made to myself. See, life and death is in the power of your tongue. Some of us are frustrated because of unhealthy agreements we made with ourselves in moments of frustration. Well, I'll, never, I'll never be married. I'll never be in a healthy relationship. Oh, I, I, I guess I'll be sick because mama, mama was sick or grandma was sick or this runs in my family. But there's somebody that say it ran in my family till it ran into me. Don't push me. I, I, I got a little more. I got, I got a little more. Tell somebody not here, not here. Up and down your road. Say it stops right here. I break that unhealthy disagreement. 
Grandma could have been divorced. Uncle could have been divorced. Cousin could have been divorced. But my marriage is going to make it. I need somebody to make a declaration in the atmosphere. Come on. Can you say break, 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 break? I feel it. Come on. Come on. Break, break, break. Come on. I break unhealthy disagreements with myself. I break, I break mental disagreements that I make. I make pop, I break poverty disagreements. Everything that does not align with the purpose of the plan of God for my life, I break it. Where the generation of world changes, where the game changes at, where the where the curse breakers at in the room. I need you to high five somebody around you and tell them I agree with God. I agree with God. I know I want to I want to get turned loose too but I'm on assignment I'm on assignment because if you don't get if you don't learn how to break internal unhealthy disagreements that you made with yourself you will be in a new relationship with the old person y'all didn't hear what I said new name new face same relationship because something in you keeps attracting something that's in them and you keep trying to figure out is it you yes when you turn on who you really are you will attract what God has assigned for your life I need a worshiper to open up your mouth and release your come on somebody say I break unhealthy agreements with myself come on Stuff I said because I was having a bad day. The devil is alive. Life and death is in the power of my tongue. I got weight in my words. There's an anointing on my declarations. I, I won't say it if I don't believe it. I break, break. I need somebody to say the most. Break, 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 break. It's a key. Y'all got it? Oh, yes. It's a key. It's a key and you can walk around. You don't know it's a key. You don't know you're doing it. You don't know it's happening. You just saying stuff. You being in your feelings. Girl, get out your feelings, okay? Your feelings will get you in trouble. Filter your feelings. Feel your feelings. Uh, but don't let your feelings become your reality. If your feelings don't align with what God has said for your life, I break unhealthy Give me a second. Sit down. Sit down. If I, don't matter if I agree with you, if I don't agree with me, it don't matter if I agree with you, if I don't agree with me, I got to first agree with God and with myself. I got to get my soul and my body to align with my spirit. If any two should touch and agree, Bishop, am I doing all right right here? I mean, if any two Wait, no, don't sit down. If any two should touch and agree, it shall be established. That first agreement is not with her. It's me and God. I don't want to be the kind of husband she wants first. I want to be the kind of husband God wants me to be. Lucky for you, that's what I like. Y'all ain't hear what I'm saying. I like nice stuff and you reap the benefits of me liking nice stuff because I like nice stuff. I don't like nice stuff because you like nice stuff. I like nice stuff because I like nice stuff. I drive nice. I eat nice. I sleep nice. I am nice. And because you come into my life, you get to benefit with my personal agreements. You're in a relationship with somebody trying to get them to change to who you want them to be. Boo, they not going to change because until they want to be who God created them to be, they'll never be who you need them to be. So she in her own, she in her own agreement with God. I'm in my own agreement with God. God got some big stuff for her. God got some big stuff for me. I agree with God for me. She agree with God for her. Now what I want to know before we agree is will you get in the way with what God agreed with me for? 
Because I don't care how fine you are, how beautiful you are, how attractive you are. If you're going to interrupt my agreement that I made with God on my behalf, then you're going to slow us down. But if I can agree with God for you and you can agree with God for me, and if any two shall touch and agree, it... Oh! High five your praise partner and say, that's where the money resides. That's where the money resides. That's where the money resides. That's where the house get bought. That's where the business get open. That's where the healing manifests. That's where the li- That's where the glory falls. Sit up here. I ain't arguing about how you want to wear your hair. Wear your hair however it agree with you. If that agree with you, then do you, boo, do you. Just don't get in the way of what God promised me and I won't get in the way of what God promised you because how can two walk together except they agree? I just need you to get one praise partner and take three steps and say, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Come on, tell them. These next four months, we're about to accelerate. Stop talking about shit. Come on, there's an acceleration that's about to hit this place. Stuff that took a long time to manifest is about to happen quickly. I need a praiser to release your sound and use your key. Tell your praise partner, say, I don't need everybody. I don't need everybody. I, I, I need to agree with God, and I need one person that will agree with God with me. As long as we're together, anything is possible. I need you to put a praise right there. Anything, any, get it in your spirit. Anything, anything, anything. Tell the book, Come on, come on, come on. It's breaking. I'm an activator. I'm on my thoughts away, but I came to... I came to activate something inside of you. Somebody shout further, faster, further, faster. It's not about the amount of people. This is about aligned people. I'm telling you, God, I don't know what he got on his mind for you. But when I tell you he want to do it so bad, he's brooding over it. He's like, ooh. Oh, I want to do it so bad for them, but I can't do it until they come into agreement. Lift your hands and worship right there. Lift your hands and worship. They're my my side. Come on, right there. Right there. There's an agreement on the earth. Come on, I agree with heaven on earth. I agree with heaven on earth. I receive supernatural ability. I break unhealthy agreements with myself. Things that were contradictory and contrary to what God has spoken over my life. I come in alignment and agreement. I operate the supernatural authority. Come on, I function in a fresh anointing. I walk in a capacity to do more than what I did before. One can put a thousand a flight. Two can put 10,000 a flight. I declare I'm about to 10 times my efforts. Come on, I need somebody in the room. I'm about to 10 times my efforts. I'm about to 10 times my efforts. There's an anointing being released. I need you to stay and worship right there. I'm about to 10 times my efforts. That which has been held up is about to be released. That which has been held up is about to be released. Lord, I'm about to. Come on, I come into agreement with my assignment. Stay there. I come into agreement with my assignment. Spoken over my life, I agree with God. I agree with God. I thank you for a fresh anointing to accomplish more. 
I thank you for answers being released in the heavenlies. Come on, prophetically over your head. Just begin to release it. I thank you for strategy and instruction and insight and revelation and abosia. I thank you that things I didn't understand, you're giving me insight. Come on, I need you to pray into it. Come on, I need you to pray into it. The power of agreement is hitting your house. Setabasia. Come on, right there. I thank you for answers. Pull them down. Instant answers, answers in my spirit. Answers, answers. Things I didn't understand. I, 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 I receive answers. I receive answers. I thank you, God. I thank you. I thank you, God. 